It's the professional Master Chef knockout. Over the competition, 48 chefs have given it their all. But only the most talented 12 remain. I didn't think I would get this far. No, definitely not. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> The competition so far, I think, has been one of the hardest things I've ever done. It's so hard to explain the nerves, the atmosphere, the pressure. We're all competing for the same goals, so everyone's going to have their, their best head on. Now the competition really begins. They will be challenged like never before. This means everything to these chefs. They're going to have to fight to stay in the competition. I'd like to remind you that in this room right now, we have the future professional MasterChef champion. Today, you have an invention test. You have two hours and 15 minutes to create one outstanding dish, savoury or sweet. It is absolutely up to you. We've also removed the water baths, the sous vide machines and your chemicals. Today is all about creative thinking and good cookery. At the end of this, the best eight will go straight through. The four that are left are going to have to cook off against each other for the remaining two places. Off you go. The 12 chefs have 10 minutes to choose from a range of ingredients, including duck, quail, pork belly, venison, oxtail and pancetta, as well as sea bass, baby octopus and oysters, and a wide range of fruit and vegetables, herbs and spices. When you have a table full with so many ingredients, it starts to play in your mind. Do I take this? Do I take that? What shall I have? Shall I put this? I like this challenge. But they've got to now stand out for the right reasons. And boy, is it going to be tough. Having gained six years Michelin experience, 27-year-old Nick now works in a fine dining restaurant in Oxfordshire. Just going to go in all guns blazing today. Just got to completely do what I do and do what I've done before. And just show the other 11 chefs that, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not just here to make the numbers up. What are you going to make that's going to impress everybody? I'm going to do a uh, duck and plums, uh, classic. Doing it with a butternut squash cumin puree and uh, either a bit of gnocchi or comfy potatoes and pickled shiitake mushrooms as well. Make a really good duck sauce. You and the duck, Mick, good luck. Nick is using duck. He's now taken the breast meat off. He's going to cure them gently and then roast the breast meat off. Serving his duck dish with plums Plums go great with duck, we all know that. But it has to be the right marriage. With the leg, he's confied them down and he's going to be making shufasi cabbage balls. Delicious. Joey is a 27-year-old who has travelled the world as a private chef. So far I'm proud of how I've performed. Obviously, that you know, nothing's been faultless. There's, you know, there's been areas for improvement. But on the whole, you know, there's been positives in every dish as well. So yeah, I, I'll take that. <laughs> Joe's chosen the quail. She's serving it with game faggots, potato croquettes, and is also making a, a consomme, a quail tea. Ooh, that's going to be a tough one because quail is a very bland flavored bird. But I think this dish sounds incredible. Is this a more complex move from your natural style or is this you? The judges said I had to kind of feist it up a bit, so that's definitely what I'm trying to do. It's bold, it's complex, I can't wait to see it. 33-year-old sous chef Scott 
works in a five-star hotel in Hertfordshire. My food is quite simple. I'm a little bit worried that there's not enough technical skill, but hopefully the technique is the flavour, so hopefully the judges can see that. Scott is using a duck, but he's taking the breast off. He's going to render down or cook down the, the fat of the duck and then take that fat to confit some potatoes. He's going to be serving those with beetroot and raspberries. A little bit of sweetness works well with duck. There's no gimmicks here. There's exactly. no water bars, there's no chemicals. How yep. does that make you feel? Yeah, I'm happy with that. I mean, I like cooking, cooking meat in a pan. My food's not about bells and whistles. I just need to nail the cooking on this and hopefully that will get me through. Gastro pub chef Mark has been a standout cook, managing to impress the critics as well as the judges. I think we're all sizing each other up at the moment. It's just, you know, it's a contest at the end of the day and uh, no one's really sure of, of how capable each other are. But, you know, this is what the competition's about. It's about sort of challenging yourself and competing against the best. I'm going to go with the seared fillet of venison today with uh, braised oxtail croquette. Uh, I'm going to do some sauteed gerolles, a butternut squash puree and some pickled beetroot. What standard do you think you've got to cook at to oh, guarantee a place? The top, the highest level I've got. You know, I know I'm competing against these guys, but, you know, as, as long as I cook what I know I can cook, I shouldn't have a problem. Oxtail has great flavour, so bringing it back into the dish as a croquette and using the cooking liquid for the sauce is a great idea. My concern is, does oxtail and an oxtail sauce go with venison? We'll soon find out. 26-year-old head chef Josh has impressed the judges in spite of one odd pairing of honeycomb with lamb. I think all the other chefs should be concerned about me because I'm wacky, I'm raw, I'm, I've got fire in my belly, I'm young, and I'm, I want to push these to the limits and really show them that I'm the one to worry about. Josh is the only chef in the kitchen today making a dessert. Pearl barley, rice pudding with saffron and black pepper. It screams a savoury to me. If there's too much saffron on this dish, it'd be almost like eating a saffron risotto with pearl barley. He's already thrown one batch of pearl barley out. I hope he's not testing it on us today. I want to be different, I want to push on, I want to do something that will wow you. I'm not here just to be the same, the norm, and I'm confident in what I'm doing. Chefs, last hour, 60 minutes left. The Italian Embassy's head chef, Danilo, has earned his place with well-executed Italian cuisine. What actually I'm about is simple food. If you plan it too much, you, you end up trying to show, show off, and I don't like that. What are you making? I'm making a sea bass cooked in two ways. One is wrapped with spinach leaf and the other one is just pan fried. I'm going to try to do our oyster juice. Were you making some pasta earlier? Yeah, I did make some pasta. I was going to do a ravioli with sea bass. Am I right in thinking you're not actually 100% sure what your dish is going to be yet? Exactly. Danilo, you've got an hour. Yeah, try it. trying to focus, trying to focus. Attenzione! <laughs> Come on! Thank you. How could you not come up with a dish from what was in front of you? I'm finding that really hard to believe. Danilo is struggling right now. 33-year-old King's College sous chef Andy has shown real promise. Despite some confused combinations. I think just under the pressure of it all, sometimes you're not executing things exactly how you would like. So I really want to just get every element absolutely perfect and I'll be a happy man. I'm braising some pork belly down with some braised fennel, 
um, some pickled fennel. Um, I'm not sure yet, I might do a bit with the baby octopus, but I'm going to taste everything as I go along and see whether it will whether it will complement it. This is evolving as you work? Yes, yeah, so I've got some samphire as well to go on it, some crispy onion rings. So almost like a bit of a surf and turf. Should I be nervous that you haven't quite yet decided what this dish should be? I'm not. There's not a lot I can say about Andy's dish at the moment because he's not too sure what he's going to bring into it. For me, the cooking in the pork belly will make or break this dish. 38-year-old Gavin has been a head chef of a boutique New Forest Hotel for the last two years. I think it's a clean slate with the final 12. We rule against one another, so yeah, it's going to be every man for himself, really. So. Oh, and Joey, yeah. Every, every man and woman for himself. Can we edit that in? <laughs> Gavin is using duck. He's going to make fondants to go with it. He's got beetroots, there's mushrooms and rolls going. He's focused and seems to know exactly what he's doing here today. Are you growing as the competition develops? I get more confident, definitely. Um, you're sort of finding your comfort zone, being more, a little bit more relaxed in what you're doing. So I think that's quite important. Otherwise, we just end up nervous all the time which isn't good. You've got just 45 minutes left, all right? 45 minutes! Sorry. <laughs> 27-year-old head chef Mark also left the critics and judges raving about his food. Mark has chosen venison for his dish today, but he's bringing to it a puree made from black pudding. He's got beetroots that he's pickling. He's cooking oxtail to make a sauce with. You want this competition, brother, don't you? Yeah, I do. It's, a, it's an amazing competition to be part of, and uh, hopefully I can keep showcasing my food. Just got to keep stepping up my game. Each round comes a little bit more confidence, and you kind of you can really push the boundaries with next dishes you're going to do and hopefully I can really show what I've been doing for the last 10 years. 25-year-old Dean's food reflects the skill that made him a junior sous chef in a Michelin-starred restaurant. Food's so personal that you're always worried about what people are going to think and say, but so far I've had quite good feedback, so I just need to be more confident and just crack on. Dean has chosen the venison today. He's also making a sauce from the oxtail. He's serving red currants, chirols, and a little bit of beetroot as well. Dean has said that he's very happy with the challenge. It's all about the cooking. He doesn't need all the mod corns. It's great to see that you know he's taken this challenge full up. You've got a steely look in your <laughs> eyes, yeah? Obviously, cooking back to basics is another level. Taking away everything, you know, all the equipment, all the sous vide and stuff like that, so it's all good, proper, raw cooking, just flavour, and that's all that counts. Good, isn't it? Great, I love it. 34 year old development chef Darren's food has stood out because of its intense flavours. As a chef, I believe that. The first and foremost thing you've got to think about in a dish is the flavour. And I think quite a lot of chefs forget that. They go for technique. And I, I believe in concentrating on the flavour and the texture. That's where I make the magic happen. <laughs> Darren's cooking a pork belly dish. He's braising the meat so it's falling apart. He's going to use some of that meat in little tortellini parcels. He's got your rolls, some Swiss chard, and I love the fact that he's going to crisp up some of the skin to, to serve with his dish. Everything that should accompany pork while Darren has here. What's happening over there with Bobby? He seems to be taking up squatters, right? I don't know. I think he's used just about every bit of equipment in the kitchen today. Not making it any easier, is it? No, but it's all right. It'll just make it better when I get through. <laughs> Last 15 minutes, please. Thirty-two-year-old Park Lane head chef Bobby has produced some stunning food to get this far. There's two ways you can win in a competition, either all of them doing very bad food and then you stand out if you're doing okay, or you do better than the best. Then you feel proud.
What are you making? Uh, pork belly, a uh, bit of uh, galangal, chili, and lemongrass. Then black pudding, uh, marigu sausage in a uh, poilando. There's a sauce I'm making with a bit of oxtail to give a body. What have you got to do today in order to progress? To give the best out of, no, better than the best. So. Better than the best? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Bobby! I'm, I'm not sure what the dish is. We, I just know there's a lot going into it. But Bobby always managed to deliver on the plate. He's done it so far. I love the sound of all the ingredients. The key question is going to be, is it going to work? Chefs, you have two minutes left. Come on! got just 20 seconds to do whatever it is you've got to do. Time's up. Stop. Lovely. So pretty. So pretty. Hold on. Thanks. You happy? No, really. No. First to be judged is Danilo. He pan-fried sea bass and rolled half in spinach. It's served with fennel, spring and pickled onions, orange, a fennel and basil puree, and an oyster water. I like your fennel and basil puree with the fish. I mean, fennel and fish is tried and tested the world over. Basil adds another element to it that I really enjoy. I think the oyster water's great because that is light, but it's salty and it's naturally salty. The cooked fennel, as well as the little hints of the orange, I think it's lovely and light and then works very well together. I like the fish. I was a little bit unsure about you wrapping it in spinach, but it works. It really sort of works. And then when you add this water to it, when you say the word water, you think, mm, tasteless. No, this is tasty. This tastes great. This takes the dish to another. This is like adding the ocean back <laughs> to, the, to, to the fish itself. I think you've been very clever, even though you probably didn't know what you were doing at the time. <laughs> but if I had that in a restaurant, I would eat all of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. This, this test was just craziness. I didn't know what I were doing up until the end. I didn't know how I was plating, I was just doing. It couldn't be so much worse, believe me. Nick has served pan-fried duck breast with choux farci cabbage rolls stuffed with leg meat, accompanied by caramelized plums, pickled shiitake mushrooms, butternut squash puree, and a duck sauce. All these individual elements are, have been cooked very, very well. Um, but what really brings this dish together as a really good dish is this amazing sauce you've made. And a little hint of sweetness in that looks absolutely fantastic. I really like this dish. Mm. It's just delicious. Absolutely delicious. I love the hints of the pickle. There's not too much on here. The sharpness of the plum. The plum is not raw. You have cooked it off. Potatoes melting in your mouth. I think you've done a great job here today, Nick. Thank you. Very nice indeed. Yeah, I, I think everyone's impressed by the quality of that sauce. To get 100% good comments is just, it's unbelievable. I couldn't have asked for any more, I'm over the moon. Uh, I was just waiting for a negative comment, but they didn't come, so yeah, I'm thrilled to bits, as you can imagine. Dean's venison has been served with wild mushrooms, onion puree, diced golden beetroot, wilted chard, and a venison red currant and oxtail sauce.
I love the look of that. That's beautiful, Dean. Dean, the venison for me is cooked perfectly. The garnish, everything here works. From the wilted charred leaves down to the yellow pickled dice of golden beetroot, the, the mushrooms, the shallots. It's, it's a well thought out, a very well balanced plate. Thank you. The sauce is rich and bold, it has a nice little touch of acid in the background that we always look for, the fruity acid flavour that always complements game very well. What you have shown here today is that you have grown as you've gone through the competition and that's a good thing. I like how it looks, I like how it tastes, I like the textures. I'd come back again. I think my confidence is coming to me now more naturally and I'm just doing good food and obviously, but I don't want to do just good food, I want to do great food. And hopefully if I carry on through the competition, that will happen. It's quite a little Joey's dish is a quail and pork faggot served with confit quail leg a potato croquette, pork scratchings, and a quail tea. Unusual looking dish, that. I, I like it. It is unusual. <laughs> there are bits I like and bits that I'm unsure of. I like the croquette, but I wonder why the crispy croquette is sitting in something wet, which is going to take the crispy away from it, make it soggy. That consomme is too sweet for me. We, we wanted to see another side to you, and that was sort of, you know, really sort of have a, a wow factor in your cooking. I think this is still a bit away from, from that. You're, you're still not quite there, but you've still retained the amazing flavours that you achieve in your cooking, Joey. Okay, thank you. You have got amazing flavour in the consomme. For me, the faggot and the consomme, I could eat that on its own. What you need to start doing, Joey, is refining your presentation. That's quite bold and big and chunky in, in many ways. Make it detailed, make it look great. Thank you. Mixed bag and I'm sort of feeling decidedly average. <laughs> Scott chose the duck and serve the breasts with confit potatoes, beetroot, Swiss chard, baby onions, and raspberries which have been served fresh and freeze-dried in a duck sauce. The duck for me is, is nice, it's been seasoned well, the skin is crispy. I would like it just a little bit under, but that's my personal taste. And I think everything that's been chosen and as a garnish to this plate works. I think what you've done in the sauce, by freezing the raspberries and chopping them and putting them inside, that really works. That's a really nice surprise. But raw raspberries on top of meat, not really for me. Okay. I love the sweet sauce. I'm happy with the raspberries. I would like more veg to eat, not just to catch the eye. However, the duck tastes superb. I agree with Greg's comments on the vegetables. Maybe I could have put a couple more on, um, but overall, yeah, pretty happy. Darren's pork belly has been served with crackling, pork-filled tortellini, wild mushrooms, shallot puree, Swiss chard, and a Madeira red wine sauce. I don't think the pork's cooked very well. For me, it's always a little bit on the dry side. I find the chard slightly undercooked. Um, the dish had the makings of a really good dish. I've seen your presentation time again and your precision and attention to detail, and I actually don't think you've done it here. I don't think you've done this dish justice like you have done in the past. Your sauce is very sweet with the, the caramelised onion and red wine. I love it. You know, it's very rich, it's got the sweetness, but it's just so much of it here that it, it just overtakes the pork. I, I, I know that that's a very sweet sauce. That's fine, I've got a very sweet tooth. And I think it's very clever to be able to pull off tortellini and that pork together. One should be dry, one should be wet, and I think you've combined them very cleverly. Thank you. I, I don't feel very confident. I think I'll 
you know, I'll be on the verge of being in the bottom four, so um, I've just got to wait and see. Bobby also chose the pork belly, but braised his with galangal, lemongrass and chilli, accompanied by lentils with merguez sausage, carrots, tomatoes, samphire, butternut squash and cardamom puree, Madeira sauce and a chilli coriander and orange dressing. Bobby, that pork is delicious. I love how you've glazed it. The spices, the galangal, there's hints of that coming through it and it's just falling apart. Love it. The lentils, absolutely delicious. With your sauce, I love the warmth of the chilli that's just coming through the sweetness of the oranges. It's not overpowering, yet you know it's there. I think it's a well accomplished plate of food. It's complex, but actually the flavours are relatively simple. It's well-cooked pork, it's soft with fat, there is a sweet sharpness, a lightness to it, and I think the cardamom through the squash is inspired. Bobby, uh, every dish you've cooked in this competition, you surprise me. And for me, you've just done it again. This is brilliant, absolutely brilliant, in, in so many ways. You're showing us something very, very new and very different, and I think that's very clever. Putting layers and layers and layers of flavour together and making it work is one of the hardest things to do in food. And for me, on this dish, you've absolutely got it on the bottom. Really. Thank you. To make uh, Chef Monica smile, it's feel good. Uh, they say, like, she don't smile often. But I think she should smile often. She look very good when she smiles. Mark seared his venison and has served it with an oxtail croquette, butternut squash puree, carrot tops, beetroot, pickled shallots, sautéed mushrooms and an oxtail sauce. Venison, perfectly cooked, well seasoned, love it, the croquette is delicious. Absolutely delicious, and I love the crunch that you have on there. Thank you. The sauce has a colossal, rich, massive flavour to it from the oxtail, which is great. It just doesn't work with the venison. Because I'm tasting beef all over this plate and not the venison. Have you overpowered it? It's hard to disagree. Uh, however, I'm enjoying the taste of the sauce so much, I'll, I'll, I'll forgive you. As, I'll tell you what, as, a, as an invention test, I think it's really clever and it looks beautiful. I'm just glad that it's, uh, those judgments are over now. I just hope, hope I'm not in the bottom floor. Really hope I'm not. Josh has made the only dessert by using the pearl barley for his take on rice pudding with caramelised peaches sprinkled with honeycomb, pickled peaches, raspberries, and a peach puree. Bit psychedelic looking, Josh. It's a bit, it's a bit wild. I don't like the idea, Josh, pearl barley with saffron and pepper. Yeah, black pepper doesn't really work as, as, a, as a dessert. The biggest thing for me is, is as well, it's is, is so strong in saffron, it almost feels like it should be a savoury. But then the texture of the pearl barley, it's, it's, it's not meant to be a dessert. OK. And that's what I find unpleasant about it. Mate, th this, this one needs reinventing. Feeling terrible, you know. I, I went a bit out there like normal, hasn't paid off and it's... Well, not really a great round for me, to be honest. Gavin's main is duck breast on a bed of spinach, fondant potato, pickled beetroot, baby onions, wild mushrooms, onion puree, and a duck jus.
the duck breast, lovely and crispy. The fondant for me is so delicious, so soft. You taste the, the fat through that you're meant to and it's really well seasoned and it just melts in your mouth. The garnish is around the outside, beautifully executed, well put together. The sauce is good as well. It's not sweet, it's nice. It complements the dish very, very well. But I think you played it safe. It's a good, decent dish. I'd happily eat the whole lot. Thank you. They loved everything. I know I've got to give a little bit more, and I know I need to give them the wow factor, but I think in tests like this, it's quite important to give them a good plate of food. And he chose the pork belly, which he braised and served with squid, baby leeks and carrots, pickled fennel, chard, spring onion, apple salsa, and a red wine sauce. When I see a chef pouring a sauce over what should be a crispy skim, it tells me that he knows it's not crispy. The pork is burnt underneath and the top of it's not crunchy. Uh, so the, there's no crackling on it there at all. The garnishes are, are very average. They're not very well cooked. There's no togetherness about them. And I think you were making this up as you were going along, Andy. Everything I'm tasting is just hitting you in the mouth for the wrong reasons. I'm eating your apples in there with the sharpness and then the rawness in there is not nice. The, the, the crispy squid is so sharp in lemon and the pepper, it's, it's overpowered the, the squid. I'm really surprised, Andy, and upset that at this level you've taken a step back. Not as upset as me. Not a great day, mate, I'm afraid. Thank you. Just uh, didn't see, do myself justice at all and got, got what I deserved, really. Last up is Mark's venison, served with a ballotine of oxtail, smoked and pickled beetroot, black pudding puree, beetroot leaves, and an oxtail sauce. You have such a light touch. The venison is juicy. The oxtail is so deep and beautiful and soft. It's lovely. The sauce is good, and I particularly like the sweetness that you get from the beetroot. Tried and tested combinations, I think, in the hand of someone who really loves cooking. I love this. Thank you. In your plates of food, it's like art and in eating it, it doesn't fail to, to deliver that. This is a fantastic plate of food. You've shown skill, and that's what I'm looking for on a plate. I want to see the chef that shows me some skill, something different, something daring, and I think you've really done that very, very well. Another you. great dish from you. Thank you. I can relax a bit now. Today was a, an, an amazing day. Hopefully I can keep pushing forward with that sort of comments. Chefs, thank you. That was an invention test of real quality. We need to decide which of you go through and which of you stay to cook off against each other. Thank you. Off you go. I've got my two favourites straight off. Bobby with his European style with Indian flavours and Mark, who just seems to have the touch and a palate of an angel. I agree. I wouldn't put one above the other. Absolutely fantastic from these two chefs. Dean made us a venison dish. It was cooked brilliantly. Next, another one that has to go through. That duck dish with the plums and the amazing sauce was wonderful. Marcus, you really like Danilo's dish. I thought Danilo was creative, he was inventive, the flavours were bold and gentle and light. I thought it was a great dish. Mark made us a venison dish. For me, the sauce just slightly camouflaged the venison flavour, but overall, the dish was executed very, very well. I agree. We've got six chefs left. Josh, 
Joey, Darren, Scott, Andy, and Gavin. Out of those remaining six, which four are going to stay here and cook again? Chefs, thank you. That was a tough test. Some of you rose to the challenge and some of you let the pressure get to you. Eight of you are going straight through to the next round. Four of you are going to remain here and cook off again for the remaining two places. The first chef that we would like to see cook again is... Josh. The second is Andy. The third is Joey. And the fourth chef that we would like to see cooking again is Darren. The eight of you going through to the next round. Off you go, well done. I feel incredible. My hands are still shaking. Yeah, really happy. I, w I was really worried. I was really worried. I didn't expect to get through, actually. I'm glad I'm not cooking again. I don't think I could deal with it. Right. You four, another invention test. We want you now to cook with the ingredients that were left from the earlier round. One hour to choose your ingredients and cook yourself into the next round. Off you go. One hour is not a long time and it's going to go very quick. Our chefs are going to have to focus, think on their feet. You've got to get in, choose your ingredients and start cooking. I'm a little bit disappointed. I sort of knew I'd be, you know, in, in my chance of being in the bottom four. So um, it wasn't a complete shock, but maybe I'd just done enough. But... Um, I, I deserve to be here and I'm hopefully going to be able to do a bit better this time then prove that I'm okay to stay, but we'll see. It's going to be tough to uh, pick your head off after, after such a bad round, but you just got to take everything on board and just work with it. Being experimental, it didn't work last time. It has in the past. I've got to put that behind me, look forward to the future and just crack on. You have not got time to make things too complicated. This is about fresh ingredients and bringing the best out of them. None of these chefs want to go home. There's a serious battle on their hands now. Josh, I'm guessing you're going to approach this invention test slightly differently than you approached the last one. Uh, definitely, yeah, 100%. I'm going to stay normal. I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to try my best, you know. Um, it's going to be beef omelette, um, two ways. A comfy yolk, so a plain tartare, black pudding, puree, and some great vegetables. It's great, great, great produce. Why, why not use it? Why didn't I think this first time around? Interesting. I've never had a tartare on a plate with seared beef before. This is going to be a first. He's still challenging us, and I respect that in Josh. We don't want him to, to change completely. He's just got to make sure it works this time around. Not too wacky, though, this time. Classic elements. Hopefully my classic training will push through. If not, it's home time, but, you know, got to give it my all now, and I am. 15 minutes gone, 45 minutes left.
you've only got an hour now. Does, does that help or make it worse? Um, a little bit of both, I think, in the last round. For me, I was questioning myself a lot, so this time I haven't got time to. I've just got to crack on and do it. And are you determined? Very much so. I'm too stubborn to give in. Far too stubborn. Good lad. <laughs> Andy is cooking us a dish using the beef anglais. He's serving it with mashed potato, a ketchup made from mushrooms, and carrots, which are cooking to the point where they should be just melting. This is a very straightforward dish. There can be no faults here. They can't hide with a dish like this. The risk for Andy's dish for me is the smoothness of the pom puree, the cooking of the fondant of carrot, but not only that, the beef. The beef has got to be right, it's got to be seared, it's got to be pink in the middle, and I hope it's tender. It's going to have to be absolutely perfect, otherwise, game over, home time. Not something I want to be doing, but. You're halfway. 30 minutes gone. So, what are you going to give to this now? Uh, everything. Uh, I'm going to just try and make it. I'm going for big, zingy, fresh. Uh, exciting. I'm doing a salad with some sort of spicy gingery squid, tomatoes, lime, some fennel. It's probably more me. Maybe I tried to, to be clever or to do something that wasn't very convincingly me. I don't know, but I, I, I know I deserve to be here. I like it that you're cooking the food that you love. OK. It's incredibly simple, maybe too simple, but I sort of panicked. <laughs> um, there's got to be something here that Joey's going to add to really knock us out of this dish. Last 15 minutes, please. 15 minutes left. How much fight you got left in you? Lots. Lots. I'm going to stick to what I believe in, so I'm going to try and make sure my flavours are on point, you know, that's the most important thing. Um, just hope that you guys like what I do. What are you going to make for us? Uh, I'm doing a, a piece of salmon, uh, some nice summer vegetables, um, a, a brown butter and a nice lemon uh, and shallot vinaigrette. There's no bobby here. You can spread out if you want. I know, I can, I can, use, my, I can use my whole bench this time. <laughs> salmon is a beautiful oily fish. You want it to stay moist. You want it to be nice and pink in the centre. I think the idea is very straightforward. What I'm going to be looking for here is great cooking, fantastic flavours, and all of those ingredients coming together. It's coming together really well. It's just a case of, I think it's too simple or not, to be honest. It is really simple. I'm looking around and thinking, hmm, there's maybe now a lot here, but hopefully the flavours will speak for themselves. We've only had an hour. Let's see what happens. What we're looking for is simple beauty. Focus, focus, push, push, push. Last 10 minutes, please, chefs. Two fish, two beef. Ready in 10. to remind you, this is cooking for your place in the competition. Two minutes. That's it. Stop. Time's up. I think I've under-seasoned it. To stay in the competition, Darren has served pan-fried salmon on a bed of spinach with fennel, carrots, 
baby leeks, samphire, crouton, a confit lemon and shallot vinaigrette, and a brown butter sauce. Darren, the fact that we've eaten 12 plates of food already today, and we're still eating it, I think says pretty much everything. The salmon is very, very well cooked. The brown butter is on the bottom. But what really I love about this dish is the little segments of lemon that you've got mm. running through it. They just take the thing to another level. That's what cuts through that butter. Yeah, Great I job. Well done. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, I have to say I completely and utterly agree. It's the butter sauce that is oily. It's got lots of salt in it as well. But it's the pieces of lemon that just come right through it. I very much like that. I'm looking around for a glass of very cold white wine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I, I, I very much like that, Darren. Thank you very much. Mm. I'd say 100 times better than, than your first cooking. The vegetables, they're all being cooked perfectly. The croutons, just soaking up the butter and all the flavours of this dish, a delightful texture. Well done to you for coming back in here and giving it a great, great battle. Thank you very much. I should have made it first time. Well done. Thank you very much. I feel great. I feel fantastic. Smashed it, mate. Thanks. There's no way I was going at this competition without a fight. It means far too much to let that happen. Why didn't they just make it the first time? <laughs> Joey's made a salad of sliced tomatoes topped with chili squid and served with a lime shallot and ginger dressing. I, I, I could eat this dish all day long, especially in the hot weather. Uh, squid's perfectly cooked for me. You get the juiciness of tomatoes, there's oil in this, there's a real zing of citrus in there as well, and good seasoning. Joey, I, I agree with Greg. Um, I could eat this all day long. Uh, it's a beautiful dish, it's, it's well executed, it's got great flavour. There's no fault in it really at all. Um, the question is going to be, have you done enough? It's a refreshing dish, but I find it so simple and, you know, there should be something in this dish that I'm going to taste and think, wow, that was unexpected in this salad. Um, and I'm not finding it. I wish I had been able to demonstrate another skill or add another dimension to the dish. So, no, I'm not confident in the sense that it's enough to get me through. Yeah, but I don't know. At this stage, the boss is the professionals. Josh has served beef anglais and also made a tartare topped with egg yolk, accompanied by raw carrot and turnips, chard, black pudding puree, and a chicken sauce. I think the beef is cooked wonderfully. It's lovely, it's still medium rare, it's been seasoned well, and the garnish, the warm garnish you have around it work very well together. The tartar, there's not a lot there. Mm. What I could taste was seasoned very nicely, but the yolk obviously still warm when it touched the tartar because then it had cooked in parts. The reason why I'm not feeling that it's working for me is that Tartar's not served like that. There's, there's got to be more of it. There's got to be a nice... It's got to work with the quantity of egg that's sitting on top of it. And it's just sort of a... Is it all about the decoration for you? Or is it about the, 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 the dish working? And I'm, not, I'm still not sure. 
OK, Josh, we like your beef. We're not sure about your tartar. Thank you, chef. Thank you very much. It's just one bit of confusion, possibly, but I've always confused them, and that's what they seem to like about me, if they do like me. But that's what it is. You're here, you're here to push boundaries. I've pushed boundaries when I've done stuff. Last up, it's Andy, who has pinned his hopes on a beef anglaise steak served with mashed potato, confit carrots, pickled wild mushrooms, and a mushroom ketchup. Andy, I personally don't think the presentation of this dish does it any justice to what belies underneath it. Uh, I like the cooking of the beef. Your mashed potato is very smooth, very creamy. The pickled mushrooms and the carrots, the fondant carrots, you know, they're, they're delicious. I think it's a really tasty plate of food. I think your presentation is what lets it down. Once we've cooked anglet, it's very, very difficult to slice it and make it look good. It's not an easy thing to do, but I think we have to focus on the flavour. Does it work? Yes, it does. Absolutely. It works a treat. There are some flavours on there that are really lovely. It looks OK, but at this stage of the game, it's not about OK. Um, the amount of work I had to get through to get it on the plate, I was happy that it all got there, to be honest. Chefs, it is so difficult to, to come back here a second time and pick yourselves up and really go at it with the same enthusiasm and passion as you did the first time round. But you all did that. As you well know, two of you are going to stay in the competition. Two of you are going to be leaving. Thank you very much for a big, big day. I've got to admire the fight of the four that had to cook again. And I think we saw actually the chef's true colours here, all four of them. Darren of the four chefs cooked the strongest mm. for me. He chose the right ingredients to marry with the salmon and then adding the beautiful lemon confit just, poo, just blew the dish almost out of the plate. It was a great dish, well cooked. So Darren's the strongest of the four. Darren joins the previous eight that have gone through. Darren, without a doubt for me, definitely joins the previous eight. Today, his dish was outstanding. That leaves us Josh, Joey and Andy. Josh is about as experimental as you can get. I like the classic stuff he did. I like the beef with the sauce. That was lovely. Yeah. But the mini steak tartare with an egg on it, that was odd. To stay in the competition would be amazing, you know. I tried to still be me and that's all I can be. I can't be anything else. I'm always going to be me. Joey, I've loved her, her cooking throughout. You know, the flavours that this chef can, can get in this simple cooking had been outstanding. But I just wanted her to bring that extra factor, you know, the extra wow factor in her cooking. Today was the first time we saw all 12, and the standards are exceptionally high. So I'm proud that I was able to compete at this level. And if this is the end of the road for me, then I, I do understand that, definitely. Andy definitely had a much better round this yeah. time. Much, much better. To cook that dish with less than an hour is a skill. I enjoyed what he had on the plate. My biggest worry was the presentation. But I've seen good looking plates of food from Andy. I'm pleased with what I've done. And someone's got to go, um, just hopefully not me. Chefs, only two of you can go through to the next round, and we've made our decision. The first chef through to the next round is... Darren. 
Well done. Thank you. Our second chef through to the next round is... Andy. Well done. Josh, Joey, good competition. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Well done. Well done. Best very well done. Great achievement. Great achievement. It's a shame, definitely, but um, I have no regrets. It's been so fun and just epic and, and absolutely the right decision was made, 100%. Everything about this I've loved, everything, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Well, maybe winning, but, you know, um, what I've done, I'm really proud of, and, yeah, I'll just keep going. Thank you. Thank you. I can't believe it, I'll just make it hard for myself. Um, I thought that it was done and dusted anyway. To still be here is very humbling. It's been an incredibly long, hard day to date, but you know, it's all forgotten now. I'm in the last 10, so it was worth it. Next time, the knockouts continue. And the contestants will be split into two teams. For the first time, they will have to work together. Put your back, please, Andy. To create a meal to remember. Let's go, let's go. Talk to us, talk to us. And then cook a standout dish to stay in the competition. I could give you a hug right now, but he'd get upset. <laughs> that shouldn't work. You have made it work. Oh.